obviously tensions are pretty high on social media right now with a lot of people covering the Israel-Palestine situation that's going on right now. And if you spend any substantial amount of time on social media, especially Twitter, uh, you've probably seen some very heated arguments. You've probably seen some uh, very toxic feuds spawn out of disagreements from the situation. And, um, you know, you've probably seen uh, just some rarely <sighs> grotesque and shocking videos making the rounds on social media. It's been it's been awful, honestly, to say the least. Um, but while I didn't want to comment too much on what's actually going on, uh, there is some, uh, a situation, a bit of a conflict on social media going on right now between, uh, the content creator, uh, known as Ethan Klein from the H3 podcast and, uh, Frogan, who is a streamer. And also I believe they're a moderator or they were a moderator for Hassan. Is it that they're currently a moderator or were they previously a moderator? If somebody in chat can correct me, uh, please let me know. But, uh, apparently there's a bit of a feud between Ethan Klein and Frogan over some, uh, opinions they've had on the, uh, the conflict going on in, you know, Israel and, uh, Palestine. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at this and we're going to kind of uh, give our thoughts as we go along. Uh, Ethan kind of commented on this, on this episode of the H3 podcast. How well does Ethan know the crew, the game show off the rails number 89. And he briefly touches on this on two points of this show. There's the first one here and uh, there's more of it here. So we're going to take a look at this. We're going to give our thoughts as we go along. So uh, without further ado, um, Actually, let me do this real quick. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Without further ado, here we go. I don't know if this is drama. I guess this is turning into a drama that I can talk about. Is that this girl, Frogan? Who? Here, let me see. Frogan. Oh, Frogan? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I, bear I don't even really, I don't even know how to say her name. I just followed her because, um... You know, there was a lot of uh, mutuals that that were following her, and it's she seemed like a nice person. So um, that that's why I followed her. She was a mod for Hassan, and me and Lena are friends with her as well. Okay. Yeah. Siberian Winter in the chest says, "I know Ethan and Hassan had some heated disagreements over uh, Israel Palestine." I gotta be honest. You know when. Ethan and Hassan talked about it on leftovers. Like a lot of people were expecting that to be a very heated conversation. And some people thought that the conversation would even get so heated that it would potentially lead to the end of the show. They thought we were going to have another um, frenemies type situation, like what happened between Ethan and Trisha Paytas. And uh, that didn't happen. There were definitely some disagreements that happened on the show. Uh, but I got to be honest the conversation that was had, I think, was probably one of the most constructive conversations I've seen uh, in regards to this topic. You know, there's so many things going on on social media that are just insane. Like, I think the thing that pisses me off the most about this situation is people are more preoccupied with talking about this topic and using it as dunks against their political rivals, whether it's, you know, fellow lefties who they're not on the same page with or, you know, right wingers or it doesn't matter. They're more preoccupied with using this situation as just another talking point to get dunks on people and get likes on Twitter. When in reality, what's so fucked up about this whole situation is this isn't just a talking point to get likes on social media. These are real people's fucking lives. You know, we have we have this conflict going on where unfortunately on both sides there are innocent people whose lives are being affected by this. Innocent people are dying as a result of this conflict. And people are more preoccupied with getting Twitter likes and having like stupid fucking debates over these are people's lives. What is wrong with people? It, it, it's disgusting if you really think about it. So she seems like a nice person, but like most things are like some people I'm seeing are just really um, leaving their humanity at the door when it comes to what's happening. The Hamas. 100%. Uh, because I, I just pulled up on Twitter. 
Trans Girl J says, this is why I don't use Twitter. It's a fucking cesspool. Oh, your life is so much better for it. Let me tell you, your life is so much better for it. If it wasn't for the fact that I, I am an online content creator and using social media to engage with my audience and promote my content to my audience, it's a valuable tool. I would not bother because holy shit, I would love to be like you and not have a presence on Twitter because I, I genuinely fucking hate Twitter. And like situations like this just really show like the lack of humanity that people have on social media platforms like Twitter. Again, we're talking about people dying chat. People are losing their lives over this conflict and people are more preoccupied with getting Twitter likes and arguing with each other over people fucking dying, innocent fucking people. You know, you have people on the Israeli side of things that don't agree with the actions of the Israeli government and their oppression against Palestine. And that you have people in Palestine who do not agree with the actions of Hamas and the horrible atrocities that they committed that resulted in the fact that we're talking about this at all. Innocent people are being affected by this, but oh, I don't like this person and they have a different opinion than me, so I'm going to get dunks on them on Twitter. And hopefully y'all, you know, people will tune into my live stream and, you know, give me donos and shit for my opinion on this. Like, it's gross. People are dying and you're more concerned with people circle jerking you on social media. I mean, this started when she, I just qu quietly unfollowed her, okay? I didn't like the tweets she was making. I thought they were like leaning too much towards pro Hamas and I just didn't like it. I didn't want to see it. And so I fucking quietly unfollowed her. I didn't make a big deal. I didn't say anything, but like she got to turn it into this whole big thing that turns into a drama that's now being posted all over the internet. Like my understanding is she's now saying that like the tweets that she made were not pro Hamas. I'm wondering if he shows the tweets. I don't know. But my understanding is she's come out and said that the tweets that she was making was not pro Hamas. And even if you're willing to be charitable and accept that, yeah, that's probably true. The timing of her tweets that she was making, like the timing was so bad because like we're talking about the horrible actions committed by Hamas had just happened like mere hours before. And she's like doing like, pro-Palestine tweets, which, yeah, I mean, you should support the people of Palestine. They've been oppressed by, you know, Israel for like decades at this point. Right. But the thing is like, there's so many people that have a hard time separating, you know, the innocent civilians of Palestine from the actions of Hamas. Right. So even if you want to be charitable to her and say that, okay, maybe she's telling the truth. Maybe she wasn't being pro-Hamas the timing of her tweets was just piss poor tips are from my understanding. She also supports Hamas. I don't want to jump. I don't want to put words in people's mouths. I don't want to jump to that conclusion, but, uh, it just, the time, like I said, even if you're being charitable to her, the timing was bad. The timing was extremely bad. I'm sorry. It's a Twitter follow. It's not that serious. Okay. First of all, and foremost, she said, uh, Oh, is he going to oh, show yeah, the tweet? Let me just check my, my Twitter because I posted a screenshot of it. <laughs> um, she posted like, yo, one of my favorite YouTubers. Oh, let me find it. I didn't post that one. I'll just show the whole context here. Frogan. Um, oh, God. I'm not. And by the way, people are probably saying horrible things about her, too, which is why I don't want to show this general uh spray of horrible shit that people are saying uh, yeah like re regardless of your feelings of what she said i i've said this before when we cover topics involving people whose takes we disagree with and stuff like that uh regardless of what you feel about what frogan said i've said this before and i'll say it again do not go and attack frogan do not go and harass frogan Pretty much anybody who's a member of my community now knows that I don't tolerate that type of harassment. I don't tolerate harassment of any kind. If I find out from anyone that members of my community are engaging in targeted harassment against anyone that I cover on this channel, 
you will be banned from my community. Don't test me because if I find out about it, it will fucking happen. We do not condone that shit. All right. Let's continue. Thank you, AB. Um, I saw this. That face when one of your favorite content creators unfollows you for being pro-Palestine. Like, first of all, the framing of that is fucked up. Okay? Let's not even go there. Second, Can I just say, like, you have to be insanely Thanks terminally money, online. Thank you. Gabriel Bad Wolf donated nine pounds and ninety-nine pence. Thank you. From Northern Ireland. Seen this all before nothing about what's going on surprises me. If we had social media back then, a lot of the same stuff would happen online. Online stuff reminds me of it more. Thank you very much for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Um, I just got to say this. Like, you have to be insanely terminally online to get super triggered if someone unfollows you. Now, I understand if it's someone, like, you're friends with and, like, you notice that a friend unfollows you, how that could be, like, hurtful and stuff like that. You may wonder, like, did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? Something like that. Like, I know, like, my friend Rump and Dump was in the chat earlier. I know my friend Gayfesh was in the chat earlier. If I just randomly noticed one day that they had unfollowed me, I'd probably get a little bit unset upset because we're, like, close friends or whatever. But, like, Frogan and Ethan are not friends. Like, they know of each other but they they're not friends they're just at, at most they're like colleagues fellow creators that sort of thing right so like if you're gonna like get this triggered by someone that you don't have some kind of personal relationship with unfollowing you i'm sorry you're you're fucking terminally online this is like this is cringe don't don't do cringe shit like this of all thank you i for saying i'm your favorite content creator i mean that's flattering you know we appreciate all the all the audience members, and I, and you know, I'm flattered by that. But saying I, you don't even know why I unfollowed you. You don't know. You you don't have no information. We've never even talked. And so people start somehow. Oh, you, here, this is how people figured out that it was me. Once again, I saw that, and I wasn't going to say anything. It's like whatever, fine. You know what I mean? Like, vent, do whatever you want to do. Ugh. Ooh. The Hamas. So I guess this from her Discord got leaked. She said, Eth uh, Ethan Klein and followed Frogan. This is from our subreddit, I think. Ethan Prob was like, this damn Arab supports Hamas. That's not funny. Jeez. She went full cope. My understanding is, does anybody know what Discord this happened in? I've seen some people say it was Hassan's Discord. I've heard some people say it was like another creator's Discord. Does anybody know for sure? Was this Hassan's Discord where this took place? She went full cope on Discord. That's not funny at all. Like the whole framing of this is really. So it's been confirmed. It's Hassan's Discord. Okay. Gotcha. Thank you. And uh, cruel. Ethan, I'll support the IDF. Refollow me. I don't support the IDF either. It's not funny. <laughs> So that's the framing of it. And then the reason I unfollowed her because apparently she wants to know is because of this tweet specifically and a few others, but this is the one that I, that I was like, I don't want to see this anymore. She said, leftists preach and foam at the mouth at the thought of a revolution happening in America. But as soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. Now, this to me... I'm interpreting and if I if I remember correctly, someone correct me in the chat if I get this wrong. But like, if I remember correctly, she tweeted this not long after the actions of Hamas, where they literally killed innocent people. What conclusion are you supposed to come to when you see a tweet like this not long after what many would consider a terrorist act? So. Who wouldn't come to the conclusion that she supports the actions of Hamas if she tweeted that not long after they did what they did? This as, um, let me read what I wrote. I don't want to, I don't want to say anything uh, out of pocket, but I don't fucking like that. People are talking about me unfollowing Frogan, so I'll explain why. Since she wants to talk about murdering children and burning families alive in their safe houses is not a revolution, it's a massacre. And if you think that's what revolution is supposed to look like, I'm terrified for your idea of an American revolution. Okay? 
She goes, but as soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. She's implying that what Hamas is doing is right. I mean, she's basically all but saying it. She's saying. Exactly. Like, there, there's no way you could come away from that not interpreting that as being pro Hamas. Like, eh, am I wrong, chat? Let me get let me get a one in the chat that like if you see that tweet, like not long after the actions of Hamas, the natural conclusion that most people are going to come to is that she's pro Hamas. Now, I want to preface this by saying this. I I don't believe she's pro Hamas. I'm going to be charitable here and say that I I don't believe that she is, okay? But like it's understandable that if she makes a tweet like this after what they did, mere hours after what they did, it's understandable why you would come to that conclusion, right? As soon as a revolution happens in the Middle East, then all of a sudden what they're doing is wrong. She's saying, in her opinion, that what they're doing is right because it's a revolution. And what she's talking about is um, Hamas. It's up to 1,500 people, innocent civilians, not settlers, not combatants, children, babies. Gimenti in the chat says revolutions are to be violent. Usually there's no way around it, but you usually would attack the powerful and the military forces, not civilians in a party out of nowhere. Exactly. In no way, shape or form should we be condoning or encouraging or celebrating violent actions being committed against innocent civilians like that. That should not be celebrated at all. That is horrifying. Innocent people being injured and some losing their fucking lives. That is not okay. As Fembro in the chat said, it, it, it's terrorism. It's literal fucking terrorism. Uh, elderly people were viciously... And, um, you know, it was just wanton, blatant, full-blown murder, massacre, depravity. Okay? And uh, if you I am 100% in favor of the freedom of Palestine. Okay? They have been op oppressed by the Israeli government for decades at this point. But the actions of Hamas is not how you get that freedom. The actions of Hamas is not how you accomplish that killing innocent people is not how you make that happen I think that that's right then i don't i don't fucking want to know you they burning families alive in their safe houses and as so i mentioned before the saddest thing about it the saddest thing about it is there are innocent people on both sides of this conflict in regards to the civilians on both sides of this conflict. You know, as I mentioned before, you have people that live in Israel who do not agree with the actions of the Israeli government against Palestine. And you have Palestinians that do not agree with the actions of Hamas. There are innocent people whose lives are being affected by this conflict. They were just born there. They did not choose to be born there or, you know, for whatever reason they have to live there and they just, they live where they live and they're just trying to live normal lives. They're trying to raise their families. They're trying to work to support their families and just live normal fucking lives just like you and me. But because of where they were born or where they, they have to reside because, you know, for whatever reason they have to be involved in this conflict they have to be victims of this conflict. Innocent fucking people who did nothing wrong whatsoever. And again, for these like online lefties, it's, it's just a talking point to get dunks on political rivals and get likes on Twitter or likes on YouTube videos and shit like that. It's gross. It's fucking disgusting. Killing babies. They found 40 dead fucking babies at this kibbutz where, like, tons of people got killed. Now, I don't know if they were beheaded, okay? And somehow, some people really care about that detail. 
So to me, the 40 babies is enough. Rambo in the chat says they had bunkers and apartment buildings meant to protect people from bombings that Hamas soldiers broke into and killed them. They had to use explosives to get those people to massacre them. Jeez. To, to just, you know, I think shooting a fucking baby's body with the AK-47 is, is uh, barbaric enough. I don't really so much care if their heads were cut off or not. And I don't have a hard time believing that they would. Shooting a fucking baby with an AK-47, yeah, I'm sure their, their, their greater humanity prevents them from doing whatever your imagination can run wild with. So, you know, sorry, I don't want to fucking know you. And I think it's disgusting what you said, and I think shame on you. That's what I honestly think, you know. And I'm going to sit here until I'm blue in the fucking face talking about how the IDF is a genocide. I think the grossest thing I saw on social media, it's actually something that I saw uh, last night being shared on, on, on Twitter. And I am not going to show it here because it's that fucking vile. Okay. If you know anything about, uh, you know, Ethan and Gila, uh, they both used to live in Israel. So they know what it's like to live in Israel, you know, with, with this conflict going on, uh, you know, they know what the people of Israel, uh, how they feel about the conflict, stuff like that. And many of them do not agree uh, with what's going on uh, in terms of the actions being done by the Israeli government. Okay. So like they know because they used to live there. Right. Not only that, but like Gila actually had to serve uh, in the, in, in the IDF. Okay. Gila had to, and it, it, it's mandatory service. You don't get a choice. If you live there, if you were born there and you live there, you have to serve, okay? It, it, it's not a, there's no question about it. You have to, okay? She had to do her mandatory service. And people are trying to like use that against Gila as if, almost as if to try and make some argument that they're in favor of the actions of the IDF when they're absolutely fucking not. Somebody did this like disgusting animation of Gila like shooting and killing uh Palestinian children and they're like trying to use this against her and my understanding is like she didn't even see combat when she was in the IDF she was like a secretary or something like that it's so fucking gross the things that people will say or do to try and get like i said before like dunks on social media yeah, Gila had a desk job. This whole situation has literally brought out the worst in people. I have seen people make insanely inhumane takes in regards to the situation. It, 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 it's, it legitimately makes you sick to your stomach to see how awful some of the people are being on Twitter over this idol criminal institution that Netanyahu should be tried for war crimes. He should immediately resign. I can tell you that the West bank, uh, settlements are basically an act of war. And I don't really believe even that Sembo says in quotes brought out, it was always there. People of Hassan's ilk have always been genocidal freaks of nature. Um, I'm starting to see that honestly. I, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not, I haven't been in this space very long. Okay. And so like, you know, I've watched content by Hassan or like, you know, Hassan orbiters before and, you know, other, you know, political content creators before, but as far as like me actually being in this space, I'm super new to this space. There's still a lot that I'm learning and stuff like that, but I'm starting to see that, you know, over the course of like the past few months or so, like some of the arguments like, uh, that, uh, you know, Hassan has made in regards to like China, for example, and shit like that. Like I'm starting to learn that very quickly. It blows my fucking mind that people like this exist, but they do. Killers are civilians in the same way that the people who were murdered are. I can tell you that what Israel's doing in Gaza is, is, is as evil as it can be be as evil as evil can be just the what they're now doing in response to this which is blowing up leveling neighborhoods cr cutting off water power food um thank you for the membership fucking simp i thank Buck you have enjoyed the kuma nation
Thank you very much for the membership. I do appreciate it. I can say that till I'm blue in the fucking face. So I don't want to hear any goddamn person saying that I'm a Zionist, which, by the way, is a dog whistle for anti-Semitism. I'm not a Zionist. The only reason people call me a Zionist because I'm... Bokovin says, did you see Hassan was defending Second Thought and trying to convince Ethan to bring him on leftovers? Uh, I did see that. I got to be honest. I've heard things about Second Thought. I'm not super familiar with Second Thought myself. Uh, isn't there like... <sighs> Isn't there a clip circulating around social media involving Second Thought where he said something really fucking insane, um, you know, in regards to this, like, conflict? Can somebody find me that clip? Because, like I said, I'm not super familiar with Second Thought, but I've heard he's had some pretty bad takes uh, on this. Anyway. Jewish, so explain to me how that's hey, not anti-Semitic, not a Zionist. Never talked about Zionism. Never talked about Israel having a God-given right to exist or whatever the fuck Zionist, whatever they think Zionism is or whatever it means. So, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? If you can't acknowledge the, the horrors that are befalling both sides, then whatever peace you're fighting for is a, is a joke. You know? If you're going to be, if you're just going to sit there callously. Just Joe, he's the one that, I thought that was Thought Slime, Just Joe. Are you mixing up two different people? Yeah, that's Thought Slime. That's not the same person. And dismiss 1,500 people being murdered the way that they were. So gruesome, so fucked up, so undiscriminate. Apparently, Ban Epinata was on the D program podcast recently. Oh, God. What are the first, like, fucking weirdos in this space that uh Keffels made me aware of when I when I joined this space was bad empanada and oh my god like that fucking guy if you're willing to gloss that over then how the fuck are you ever going to find peace with Israelis how it will never happen in fact the only way this conflict ends if you're unwilling to see the humanity of murdered civilians just because they happen to be Israeli is probably with the genocide of all fucking Israelis. Because how how else does this end for you? Because apparently revolution is good when it's killing civilians on a massive, un, un, unmitigated scale. Going house to house, murdering families, parents with their kids right in front of them. Like I said, even if you're willing to be charitable to Frogan and say that that's not what she was saying, there are there's so many people on social media who were making that exact argument. And it's just like, how can you call yourself a leftist and be in favor of the slaughtering of innocent fucking people? Innocent civilians who were just minding their own goddamn business. How? How? No matter how you try to explain it, no matter how you try to break it down, it doesn't make sense to me. And again, like, I, I'm new to this space. I'm still learning a bunch of things. I'm still trying to understand certain things. I'm trying to find exactly where I fit into this space. But even a newcomer like me can look at these arguments and say, what is the matter with you? What the fuck is the matter with you? How fucking dense and how lost do you have to be to be in favor of the loss of innocent lives? It doesn't make sense. No matter how much you try to make it make sense to me, it will never fucking make sense. So, so these people who are like pe like leftist peace, they want peace, they want to free Palestine. You're if you are so fucking close-minded that you can imagine that the suffering of an Israeli person is is valid then you're lost. And the same way, and the same goes for Israelis. And again, I say this on blue in the fucking face. If Israelis can't imagine why, you know, terrorists come out of, Palestinians uh, are becoming t terrorists. If you don't understand why, you know, some, why Hamas, or why some Palestinians 
uh, want to do this kinds of shit, then you're also. I actually tweeted something about uh, it's not in regards to this particular, you know, clip that we're watching here. It was actually in regards to the episode of Leftovers, which, like I said, the episode of Leftovers went surprisingly well. A lot of people were expecting that episode to be like a complete you know, verbal bloodbath between, you know, Ethan and Hassan. And it went surprisingly well. Yes, there were some things that Hassan said that were still questionable. And Ethan pushed him on it when it was necessary to push him on it. But for the most part, it was a pretty good conversation. But during that, I tweeted something that I I, I feel really kind of like embodies this conversation on social media and why Ethan's approach to this conversation has been the right approach. Um, I tweeted out this, the empathy and compassion that Ethan Klein is showing right now on leftovers is something that has been absent in the discourse online. These are merely, uh, these aren't merely arguments to be used to get dunks on political rivals and get Twitter likes. This is affecting real people's lives. And I truly felt that when I tweeted that because so many people, so many people have lost all of their humanity during this conversation. Like, reckless disregard for the lives of innocent people. It's been absolutely horrifying to watch. It's like it's a game for these people. It's not a fucking game. Also part of the problem. You know, people don't want to imagine. They don't want to, they don't care. It's like, Israelis, we don't care about dead Palestinian babies. We just bomb it because, you know what? It's a retaliation. So we're just going to bomb fucking Gaza. And, and on the other hand, you know, these woke leftist fucking, I don't know what you call this uh, branch of leftism is, uh, but they don't care about um, 1,500 civilians being mass murdered. Jeez. Raped? Yes, raped. Let's not even pretend that didn't happen, you scumbags. Okay, and maybe, f and so maybe, and then, we don't know, 40 babies were definitely killed, maybe only one was beheaded. I don't know if there was more than that, so, maybe it's not as bad as we think. Is that right, Frogan? <sighs> Jeez. Scumbag. I'm sorry. Scumbag. What are you doing for peace, exactly? Except coming out here and virtue signaling how fucking left you are, how woke you are, how much you care for peace or the Palestinian people more than anyone else. Like, let's be real about what the world is for a fucking second. And imagine Jeez, he is going off. And I can't even blame him. After watching the conversation play out on social media over the course of the past few days and just watching the most dog shit takes be given. I can't even blame him for popping off the way he's popping off right now. It's just been, it's been a shit show. People are really showing their true colors during the course of this conversation. Imagine like, what is, like you, you support Hamas. What did Hamas do for the peace process? These are your revolutionaries. I think the craziest thing about it, the craziest fucking thing about it, you have all these lefties arguing about whether or not literal terrorist acts are okay in the name of revolution, right? And then you have like right wingers just watching us all eat each other alive, like pop in their popcorn, just watching the retarded fucking arguments play out. Aries, right? What did Hamas do for the priest process by doing what they did? They further entrenched Netanyahu and his insane, radical, right-wing, murderous, genocidal uh, cabinet. So now he's got more support in Israel, where before, Israelis were, they were so over him. People are turning on him. But now, now it's a wartime, so they got to back him up. The Israeli general populace... Many of whom, by the way, some of y'all don't want to believe, a lot of them, especially who were killed at this fucking peace party, massacred there, are pro-peace, anti-Israel government, pro-Palestine.
I think what's funny too is like watching so many people like look at Ethan. Like I get it. Like Ethan came from like in terms of his content creation background, he was a commentary channel where like his his history on the internet was talking about like internet drama. And you know, over the course of the past, you know, what year or two, <clears throat> he's kind of gotten into like talking about politics and stuff like that. And so a lot of people like don't take him seriously. And they see him make a statement like that and they're like, what the fuck do you know? What do you, what do you know when you make these statements? Like, how do you know what the fuck you're talking about? And so they question him and it's really ridiculous that they would question him on this topic because as I mentioned before, him and his wife lived there. That was, that was their life experience living there, living on the ground, living around other Israelis, having conversations with them, understanding what other Israelis think about the conflict. Like they were there. If anybody would actually have a, have a grasp on what actual Israeli citizens think about this conflict, they would fucking know. So to see people like, look at that and like, Oh, like psh, the fuck do you know? You're just a podcaster. You're just an ex commentary guy. What the fuck do you know? They lived there. They literally fucking lived there. So a lot of these people are now being like, listen, we got to defend ourselves because that's, they're just human beings, right? And their, their, their reaction is human. It's human. Okay. Not saying it's right or wrong, but like, let's fucking be real about the world we're living in. Scumbag. Sorry. You can't just go on Twitter and type this shit. There's consequences. Fuck you. All I did was unfollow you on Twitter. You want to make a big fucking deal about it? Fuck you. Shove it up your ass, you fucking... You know what I mean? Like, how dare you even say this? As soon as it happens in the Middle East, what they're doing is wrong. Okay, so Hamas is right. Let's go, Hamas. What else has happened? International community who was uh, widely supportive of Palestine is now everyone's like, yo, Israel's got a right to defend itself. Every single fucking issue. Cole Frazier in the chest is even haters like Tom are giving Ethan a double on this because he's right. Because he's right is right. And he's fucking right. You know, I haven't been the biggest fan of Ethan over the course of the past few years. I have not been the biggest fan of him, but I got to be honest. He's been right about a lot of things lately and I'm coming around to him. He's fucking right. That was working in. Palestine. And the thing is, it, it, it's not even about W's. That's what I'm talking about. It's like for so many of these people, this conversation is just about W's. It shouldn't be that way. You're talking about people's lives. Who gives a fuck about getting W's? And I don't mean that any disrespect to Cole Frazier in the chat. I understand what you were trying to say. But for some of these people, maybe not for you, but for some of these people engaging in these conversations and having these stupid fucking takes on this conflict, that's what it's about for them. It's about fucking W's. I need to get more likes on Twitter than you. I need to get more likes on my YouTube video than you. I need to get people circle jerking me over my opinion on this situation. And it's sickening. So again, it's no wonder that Ethan's pissed about this. People's priorities are mentally fucked. Ethan's favor has now been completely reversed by Hamas. So how the fuck are these revolutionaries exactly helping you? And how is what they're doing the right way, Frogan? I'd actually like you to explain that for me, please, if you could. You know. Sorry. <laughs> Trans girl Jade in the chat can vouch right now. I didn't even want to talk about this situation. I had no interest in talking about this situation because of how toxic the conversation is around this. But I thought that this little feud between Frogan and H3 
perfectly personifies the problems with this conversation. There's got to be a reckoning with this level of callous disregard for the death and suffering of, of, of civilians. And everybody wants to look and say, look at all the Palestinians that are dying. I mean, who gives a fuck about the Israelis? And the Israelis are saying the same thing. Look at all the, look at all the, uh, all the civilians that died. You know, we have to defend ourselves. The fuck I'm surprised you're talking about it now, to be honest, but I'm glad you're adding your voice to the conversation. And I'll be honest, like, I'm not like super knowledgeable of every little detail of the situation. I know enough to have my own opinion on what's going on. It's like I said, the, the, the part that's just most, you know, disappointing to me about the conversation about this online is the lack of humanity that people have. The fact that people are willing to just toss aside the lives of innocent people as if they don't fucking matter. Like imagine putting yourself in that situation of living somewhere where like you lost a loved one in a horrible attack, like the attack that was com committed by Hamas. That would feel absolutely horrifying. But the problem is, you know, people over here in, you know, um, America or Canada or, you know, all these other places that aren't, you know, directly connected to the conflict that's going on. They're so far separated that it's easy for them to have that lack of humanity for people who are suffering right now. It's easy to look at what's going on behind a screen and just make stupid arguments in relation to a situation that doesn't personally impact you. And I think that goes to show just how much like social media has desensitized people to where they can literally look at a situation like this where genuinely people's lives are being lost and negatively impacted by this and they can just not even care. Not, not even care. It's almost like these people, it, it's almost like the arguments that are being made are these people's, the loss of these lives were necessary for, for, to have, to have the outcome we want in this conflict. It's like, no, that's not true. Innocent people's lives should not be affected by this situation. And yet they are. And there are dipshits on the internet making stupid justifications for that happening. We got a level Gaza. You know, y'all really want to talk about fucking peace while dehumanizing each other to the point where you don't even care if their kids die. Like, Israelis don't care about dead Palestinians. And Palestinians, well, I'm just speaking generally here. You know, these they don't care about the, uh, I'm going to say a lot. They don't care about the, the dead Israeli kids. So what's progressive about your take exactly? Jeez. I'd like to fucking know how you're just not a straight up authoritarian, violent, you know, freak. I don't know. I don't understand. Trans girl Jade in the chat put a vest. I'm all for Palestine to get their freedom and independence from Israeli government oppression, but not at the cost of innocent civilians' lives on either side. 100%. That is, chat, that right there is the only take anyone should have in this situation. That is the only take, even for someone like me, who, as I mentioned before, is new to this space. That is the only take that makes sense. And the fact that there are people out there who have the take that the loss of innocent lives is justified in the name of revolution. That is horrifying that there are people that exist that actually fucking believe that. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And it shouldn't be tolerated. Shame on you. And that's why the fuck I unfollowed you. Scumbag. Jeez. Thanks for bringing it up, by the way. I wasn't even going to talk about it.
Did I make myself clear? That's all I have to say. Anyway, there's 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 more to the clip, but I, I, I think we've I think we've seen enough. Um if you guys want to watch the rest of it, I'll link in the chat where you guys can watch the rest of it. But the entire conversation surrounding this on social media has been, you know, I, I I've been on the internet a long time. I've been a content creator a long time. And I've seen really hard conversations like this happen numerous times on the internet and they get pretty ugly sometimes, but this is by far one of the most like vile things that I've seen people discuss on the internet and just have like the most insane takes in regards to this situation, literally justifying the loss of innocent lives. I, I don't even know what to say on it. What I, I, I'm at a loss for words. Anyone, I, I'll, I'll just leave it at this. Anyone who tries to justify the loss of innocent lives under any circumstances, shame on you. You are a vile, disgusting person to think that justifying that under any circumstances is acceptable. It's just not. Thank you.